Welcome to Akai Custom Guns. My name is Jay Horowitz. Let's Go Murdoch is uh, standing right next to me. We just came back from the World Shoot. This is the largest event in our industry in USPSA and uh, IPSC, IPSC, the international organization. Uh, we just had uh, 1,400 shooters go through Frostproof. Um, we did really well. Uh, we're very excited about our, our team. Uh, Lesgar Murdoch uh, shot extremely well. Shane Coley is shooting extremely well. We're really crossing our fingers, hoping to finish uh, top 10 or even better, uh, win the, the whole match. Uh, Blake Miguez also shooting our gun. Blake Miguez won the world championship last time, so he's the defending champion. So we're hoping that he will repeat this time and win the uh, world championship again. So we are back at the shop, have to uh, get going with some work. So we came back to the shop. Um, welcome, I just wanted to invite you and, and show you what we do a little bit more about the guns and the different types of guns that we manufacture over here. If you want to find us, Akai Custom Guns, acguns.com or akaicustomguns.com and you can find everything about us uh, over there. So basically we manufacture two different types of guns. One of them is the single stack. Single stack is the original 1911 design. Uh, most people are very familiar with this gun. It's, a, it's quite the classic. It's called the single stack because all of the rounds go in a single stack inside the magazine. Very thin magazine. This goes inside. Um, then they develop the modular one. This is the same frame on the inside basically. It takes the same top end, but this one is this one is actually a double stack. The nice thing about the double stack is that you get a much larger magazine with a much larger magazine capacity. If, uh, for example, you shoot uh, 40 caliber, 40 Smith and Wesson, uh, these will hold 20, so 20 plus one in the gun. If you're shooting nine millimeter, it'll hold 23 plus one. So these are tremendous, and they're basically the same frame only with a plastic grip, a nylon uh, a grip on the bottom for the larger mag capacity. So these are really beautiful. Um, of course, we also have even another part of the modular grip, uh, uh, the metal grips. Uh, these are made out of stainless steel. They give a little bit more weight to the gun. A little, the gun shoots a little bit flatter, a little bit faster. Um, and of course, they are attached to the grip with the screw set. And they come in different textures. For example, this texture is a very aggressive texture um, and complements the gun very well. This one is actually made out of aluminum, so, so it's a little bit uh, lighter. We have grips out of stainless steel, out of aluminum, and out of titanium even. Titanium, of course, is very expensive, but it's uh, very exotic. So what we're going to do, basically, is we're going to go through the gun, and we're going to show you how uh, we assemble the gun, the different components of the gun, and what makes these guns very, very special. Every part that we do starts with the frame, and the frame comes to us in this shape. It's not cut, it's not, uh, it doesn't fit together, what we have to do is we have to cut it. The blue that you're seeing is basically called a marking fluid. The marking fluid allows us to see what parts are still touching in order to get the perfect fit. What we do is we cut the bridge inside over here. So this is the barrel, so the barrel can fit inside and it's a very, very solid fit. So the gun will last a very, very long time. Basically when the gun is full recoil, it hits inside the frame, very nice fit. This is our slide and you can see that now the slide can go on and it's very, very smooth. What we have to do is we have to cut on the bottom and so on. We do another system we call the, the stroking system and that's when we move the recoil surface forward a little bit. If this is an uncut slide, this is a brand new slide, and we put them side by side, you can see basically where they are different. And we move this forward, we reduce the recoil, we make the gun faster, flatter, and quicker shot to shot accuracy. Um, if you want to go on our website, you will see quite a few videos of our guys shooting. If you are, if you look up the world shoot, you will see quite a few of our guys shooting these guns and how by a little bit of advancement in the way the gun is built, we're able to make a better shooting gun, help our guys win. Um, it's not the gun, it's the shooter, but the right tools for the job definitely help. And that's why our shooters stay with us and they love our guns because we help them win. The other thing that you'll notice about this, uh, this uh, gun 
is that the barrel has an island on it. There's a piece of metal that is machined into the barrel and the beautiful part behind it is when they fit together, they fit like this. We do this in order to reduce the reciprocating weight. The reciprocating weight is the actual slide. The stationary weight is the barrel. So the more weight is stationary, the less weight is reciprocating, the less recoil, the faster the gun, and the easier it is to, to uh, take the follow-up shot, because our sport is all about follow-up shots. The other part about this barrel that's a, main that's a major advantage is that the front sight actually goes on top of the barrel. So if your focus is on the front side, uh, I haven't cut this one yet, so that's why you're not seeing it, but um, if, if your eyes are focused on the front side as the gun is cycling, it, uh, it, it stays pretty good. Here's an example of one of these guys that is already has a finish on it. This is uh, iron bond on the bottom and iron bond on the top, and you can see where the island barrel is. And as the gun is cycling, you can see that the front side is not moving which is a major advantage. So, that's as far as that's concerned. Now, when we start with the slides, we basically start with a slide that looks like this, is the way we get them. Um, they are unfit, uncut, um, but they're, they're made out of beautiful material. It's 4340, incredible slides. We, we, we are in love with uh, the materials we work with. Um, after we start machining these, and this is the machine that I use to machine the, the slides, we're able to cut inside over here and fit the barrel. We are able to flat top it, and you'll see on top over here how well they're blended together. We're basically hiding the barrel inside with these cross cuts. We also make side serrations on the slide in order for you to be able to grab it a lot easier um, so you can uh, rack the gun. So when the top goes on the gun, you can see how we're able to take some material off of here. We call this the butler cut. It's Apatarian Butler, also one of our shooters. Incredible, incredible guy. Um, if you want to look up uh, Taryn Butler on YouTube, uh, you'll be very impressed. Uh, Lesgar Murdoch on YouTube. Uh, Lesgar Speedy Murdoch on YouTube. Uh, Shane Coley, um, Blake Miguez, uh, Keith Garcia. Um, any one of those, uh, some of our top shooters, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Um, but basically, you, you have a, a very nice looking gun that basically started with this. So you can see the difference between them. Now, we do this for, for uh, 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 aesthetic reasons, but we also do it for functional reasons. Um, we want to reduce the recoil, we want the follow up shots, we want the, the maximum accuracy. So, we reduce the weight of the slide. We uh, uh, move the recoil point forward. Um, we machine sights in them. We machine serrations into them. We flat top them so they're a little bit lighter. Uh, much, much easier to see the sides. And then, of course, we use these kind of barrels. When we fit the barrel, we take a lot of pride in fitting barrels into a gun. We are, that's our passion, is fitting a barrel into a gun. Because to us, accuracy is everything. I mean, you, you can have a, a very fast cycling gun, you can have a very fast gun, but it's got to be extremely accurate. The type of groups that we're actually looking for, we're looking for groups about this size at 50 yards. And that takes a lot of passion, a lot of patience with fitting the barrel correctly into the slide. So when the barrels fit into the slide, and I put my finger over here, the barrel will not move at all. I want the barrel to be able to lock into the gun exact same point every shot. That takes very, very tight frame to slide fit, and very tight uh, a sli uh, uh, barrel to slide, and very tight on the lower lugs. So every time the sights are lined up, you take a shot, it's exact same point. If you do your job, if you line up the sights correctly, you pull the trigger correctly, we're trying to extract the absolute maximum accuracy out of these barrels. Um, these are incredible barrels, they're made out of H13. Uh, tool steel, uh, they're made by Infinity, um, absolutely tremendous. Uh, all the blue marking fluid, of course you see because we just uh, uh, fit it together. The other thing that you're going to see about the slide that's very interesting is we take weight off the back of the slide. I'm not sure if you can see uh, uh, the weight removal over here versus 
on normal slide. You can see where we remove the weight. And the reason why we do it, because otherwise, there's a big chunk of metal back here. And there's not a whole lot of metal over here. So when the slide is cycling on the gun, and it's all the way back, we don't want a big chunk of metal over here by itself, because that will cause flip in the gun. So we lighten the back as well. So the slide is very, very well balanced. So what we're gonna do right now, oh, that's another thing I need to show you, how far back the slide actually goes, and that's because of our stroking. Stroking is a system that someone else developed. We did not develop it. We basically revived it. And from what I know right now, we are basically the only gun manufacturer out there that is stroking their gun, increasing the stroke. Let me talk a little bit about this real quick. The reason why we stroke the gun. We stroke the gun because when you shoot a gun, there's two parts to recoil. You shoot, bullet comes out, equal and opposite reaction, normal physics, bullet comes out, gun recoils back. There's nothing we can do about it. But when the slide actually recoils, what happens is it hits the frame on full recoil, it hits the frame, and that causes the muzzle to come up. What we're doing by stroking the gun is we're delaying that reaction, and we're using a lot more of the recoil spring. Think about the recoil spring as a shock absorber. So we're using a lot more of the shock absorber all the way to the very end. We're compressing it all the way in order for it to reduce recoil. By increasing the stroke, we're actually going up 27% in spring weight. 27% is quite a bit. So for example, if you're using a 10 pound recoil spring, by stroking it right at the very end, right before, it, before the crash, before the crash of the slide into the frame, it actually increases to 12 pounds. It actually increases about 20, to 27 percent. Um, our shooters love it because one of the things about the frame hitting, um, one of the things about the frame hitting the, 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 sorry, the slide hitting the frame is it also causes jitter in the gun. Now I want my shooters to be able to do a follow-up shot as fast as possible and therefore I don't want the crash to be too hard. I want a soft crash and that's uh, that's the beautiful part behind this stroking system. Um, we're gonna go ahead and assemble the gun Part of the frame is the ejector. Uh, ejector basically bumps, has to bump the case out of the gun. Um, that's one part of it. The other part of it is the bridge. You can see it's two round surfaces hitting. So when the gun's at full recoil, you have a very, very solid surface so nothing breaks. Um, trigger components. We have a disconnector. We have a sear. We put them through. And then they are held in with a pin. Now the sear is the one that actually trips the hammer to go forward. We do uh, a compound angle on the sear surface in order for it to have the crisp trigger job against the hammer. We use lightened hammers. We use titanium um, um, hammer struts to make them light so they lock up quickly. Lock up is basically the time from the time that you pull the trigger to the time that it actually triggers. We use sear springs. The sear spring is basically the one that keeps the trigger job together. Mainspring housing actually has a mainspring inside here, and that's what actually makes the hammer go forward. There we go. This is the grip safety. This one is not disabled yet, so it's going to take a little bit more effort to put in. There we go. And then, of course, the, the safeties. And I'm just putting the safety in just to get it together. All right. These are all held in by a pin. There we go. Now we test the trigger job. Put the hammer back. And every time I squeeze the trigger, uh, this trigger job is about uh, two and a half pounds. Usually on our limited guns, or our standard guns, um, we go with about two and a half pounds. If you go to an open gun, open class gun, we usually go about one and a half pounds. Uh, of course, Lesgar 
Speedy Murdoch uh, uses one pound. So, but uh, uh, he's a professional. Don't try it at home. Um, 